This is my design for a 3D printed compound planetary gearbox with an 80 to 1 reduction ratio for a NEMA 17 motor. And this is the exact same gearbox printed only using my new resin printer. For its reduction ratio and performance, this gearbox is actually pretty small. And if you don't believe me, here's a banana for scale. Oh wait, hold on, that's not right. There we go. Whew. That was a close one. But I needed to know whether I should be printing these gearboxes using my standard FDM printer, which is a CR10S, or my new resin printer, which is a Creality LD02H. To do an initial test of the design, I used my CR10S to print the parts out of PLA. This gearbox actually has 24 parts in it if you count the hardware needed to assemble it, and looking at the cross section, the density of these parts is pretty high. This design has eight main 3D printed parts. These consist of one sun gear, which slides onto the motor shaft, three planet gears, a carrier for the planet gears, an outer housing, which includes the first ring gear, a second ring gear, which is attached to the output hub, and a faceplate. I will also include some links below to the files for all of these, as well as the necessary hardware to assemble this gearbox. Assembly for this gearbox is really straightforward and everything either presses, bolts, or screws together. With an assembled gearbox, I can now test the torque capabilities by adding a 100mm arm to it and using a 20kg load cell. Load cells are really cool and they're able to measure the force applied to them using this really simple but ingenious circuit called a Wheatstone bridge. Using this we can monitor and record the amount of force that the motor and the gearbox can exert. So yeah, uh, obviously that didn't work too great. I took apart the gearbox and it doesn't seem that any parts are broken or damaged. So it looks like that some of the gears just started skipping before the stall torque of the motor was reached. After some investigation, I think the issue was the meshing of the planet gears and the second ring gear was a little too loose. Luckily, this was an easy fix. I could quickly go into CAD, adjust it, and then reprint it. This time the planets had a much more snug fit with the second ring gear. After reassembling the gearbox, I can rerun that exact same test monitoring the force from the load cell. This time the force exerted was actually four times higher and there was no skipping or failures within the gearbox. And since we know the length of the arm on the gearbox and we know the measured force from the load cell, we can actually calculate the torque achieved by the gearbox so with some initial data and a design that seemed to work, I was ready to print a version using resin. To test the durability of my gearbox, I'm going to borrow a test setup idea from a channel called 3D Printed Life. 
He stress tests his model of a 3D printed harmonic drive by repeatedly applying force to a load cell in a closed loop setup with his motor. This is a great and simple way to do repeatable tests with cyclic loading. If you haven't already, definitely go check out his channel. There's a lot of great stuff there. For these tests, the motors take turns applying force to the load cell until they reach their stall torque. Both gearboxes were doing really well until I left for an hour or two and came back to the resin printed gearbox making this sound. Yeah. Clearly something was wrong, so I took apart the test setup and dissected the gearbox. Immediately a bunch of powdered plastic and broken teeth fell out of the gearbox housing, which was definitely not a great sign. Further inspecting the gears showed that multiple teeth had sheared off and caused the whole setup to jam. However, to give resin another shot, I reprinted the inner gears using a stronger resin and then restarted the test. This time, both gearboxes last over 500 cycles without any issues. However, shortly after 500 cycles, the resin gearbox started acting up a little bit and moving in some weird ways. Just a few cycles later, it jammed up for good. Dissecting this gearbox yet again led to powdered plastic and broken teeth falling out. I think the resin was just too brittle for this application. However, when I took apart the FDM PLA gearbox, there was essentially no signs of wear. Additionally, the FDM parts were so much easier to print without having to go through the entire resin process. This gearbox is actually going to be used in a future project of mine, so stay tuned for that, but until then, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.